Yo, Bo, welcome to another episode of In the Life of Mighty Fan. Got some pickups. We'll do have a little discussion afterwards, too, on a few things. So let's get right into it, right? So the pickups first. Uh, this is over the past however many weeks, um, you know. So um, I already did my Super Bowl, my post-Super Bowl vid, but this jersey came in the mail uh, prior to the game. It's the replica version but it's the super bowl 57 jersey that i wore during the game unfortunately it was an l for the eagles but brandon graham bg right there one of the great all-time eagles still cool to have the jersey and it could even be i mean unless they re-sign him his final jersey he wore as an eagle but you know we'll see what happens in the off season it does have the super bowl 57 logo right on there on the front um, you know, so unfortunately, not a very memorable game for uh, us Eagle fans, but you know, it is what it is. You know, hopefully, next time. But, um, but that's the jersey, and then this one is uh, my first Nike Authentic. Uh, I did not own an authentic Nike prior to this one. Uh, I got a member in the community hit me up uh before the game i guess the week or so before the game had this for sale asked if i was interested we worked at a deal and here it is so we got the uh authentic nike jalen hurts and if the eagles would have won the super bowl he would have been the mvp and some say even he probably could have been the mvp anyhow in a losing effort um so when I got this, my original plan, and I, I still plan on putting the captaincy on here with the two-star representing this past season, I was going to get the Super Bowl 57 patch. We're not going to do that because, you know, it was a loss. They made it there. Great. But they didn't win it. So we're just going to go with the, with, the, with the captain patch because it was uh, MVP caliber season for him. And it's also the final season that they're going to wear that as the word mark so you're always going to remember that that was that season right because they're changing the word mark up next season um but it's a nike i guess you know your authentic vibe uh you know nike uh nfl jersey so it's got the sleeves like this that do take a little getting used to <laughs> but it's cool it fits really comfortable i mean i will say that it's a comfortable jersey you have the NFL shield right there. I guess what they call these, the Vapor Unlimiteds or whatever these are called, um, on-field apparel, you know. But obviously, it is the authentic Midnight Green Jalen Hurts. You don't see too many authentic Jalen Hurts. Of course, that's probably going to change But next season. But there it is. Nameplate, Hurts, uh, double-stitched name double stitched onto the nameplate and then of course you got your nike swoosh on the sleeves the eagle logo right there the black cuffs black trim around the neck got your jock tag size 56 very cool i mean it's an awesome jersey i'm glad i have one at least i have one in the collection no pun intended there have one in the collection but uh you know, very, very happy to have it. And uh, like I said, I will be at some point getting the captain patch put on there. And we'll just leave that Super Bowl 57 patch off. But uh, <laughs> what could have been? You know, what could have been? But we got that Jalen Hurts right there. QB1. Nike Authentic. Shout out to, uh, shout out to King Leo and all the guys in our community that collect a lot of these Authentics. I obviously don't. Like I said, that's my first one. So I'll probably, you know, I'll probably get some more over the years, but, you know, I got that one right there. Uh, this next one is not an authentic. This is, I guess, your swing man. But being that he is hopefully retiring for real, for real this time, I wanted to get this one. I do have his Patriots jersey, so figured I'd get a uh, Tampa Bay one as well. So I wanted to grab it before they became scarce. So, like, the day he announced he's retiring, hopefully for real, for real, I grabbed it off of, uh, I forget if it was Fanatics or Lids. It was one of the two, probably Fanatics, I would imagine. They're all the same. But uh, I got it because uh, it has the captain patch already on there. 
in gold, obviously. So Tom Brady, Tampa Bay, Buccaneers jersey. They, like I said, it's like the, the swingman version, you know, so it's not authentic or, you know, but it's still a nice jersey. I have a few of these, you know, swingman versions in the collection. So uh, the pirate ship on the sleeves, you got the trim, you know, Buccaneers 12 on the front. You do have that um, jock tag on the bottom. Yes, as an Eagles fan, it was still cool to do battle against him a couple times in the Super Bowl. He got us once. We got him once. So, you know, we did battle with him. There are fan bases that can't really say that. They did battle against him in the Super Bowl. You know, I wonder who some of those fan bases are. Hmm. <laughs> so, anyhow, so there we go. Your Tampa Bay Buccaneers Tom Brady final season jersey of his career more than likely. I do have his final Patriots jersey because it was the uh, the blue Patriots jersey with the NFL 100th. So that was his final um, final season with the Patriots and before he moved to Tampa. It is a shame that he he didn't get there. He didn't stay one more year in Tampa when they wore the creamsicles next season. But it is what it is. <laughs> that would have been pretty cool to see him in a creamsicle. But you now we can always do that in Madden. So you know. <laughs> uh, up next, oh boy, this is, uh, yeah, this is, yeah, um, so, uh, this is a jersey that became very difficult to find and get, particularly to get with a player name and number on it, it is from the original Retro Reverse, um, series, um, Reverse Retro series, rather, uh, from the NHL. Uh, it came out a few years ago. It was instantly one of the most popular ones from the 1.0 set. And like I said, it, it just became real difficult to get. And when you would see it on eBay, the seller wanted big time bucks. Because they know what they have. They have a rare jersey. It's a sought after jersey. It's it's like a, it, it hits in the nostalgia feels for it. And, um, you know, they were just becoming very, very scarce. So... When I saw one at a good enough price, I had to jump on it, and the paying for it does help. We, we know I love that. But we got that uh, Carolina Hurricanes, Hartford Whalers, uh, you know, reverse retro 1.0, and they went back to the Hurricanes with the, with the gray jersey. So there it is. There's your, there's your uh, reverse retro 1.0. And the player is Sebastian Ajo, one of the good young stars on the team. We got that name and number on the back, name on a nameplate, the 20, double stitched. It's an authentic Adidas. It's got Pucky on the shoulders. <laughs> and this jersey really pops. We all know I love road gray jerseys for baseball. And this isn't exactly a road jersey, but just the gray. Oh my. The, the stripes on the bottom. Shout out to, to Throwback King. I know he's a, obviously, you know, Whalers, Whalers fan. This jersey is just a beautiful, beautiful jersey. And believe it or not, this is my first representation of a Whalers jersey in my collection. But I still have yet to get an, an actual Hartford Whalers jersey. But that will come at some point. But, you know, the classic logo, big and bold on the front, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I wish they did another whalers theme jersey for their reverse retro 2.0 <sighs> yeah i was disappointed with what they did i you know it, it was based off a jersey designed from like a few years ago i mean you had this <laughs> and he could have done like a blue version i know they did the green for like a while it was like a throwback so if they wanted to do so it yeah so anyhow so there is that yeah, so this is uh, based off 1979, this this jersey. So there you go. So, yeah, 1.0, Sebastian Ajo. Beautiful. Really love it. Now I just have to get the right hat for that, but you know you know I will. Um, last but certainly not least, uh, this was from Fanatics. I got the custom version so I can get the player I wanted. Got the Team USA for the World Baseball Classic that will be coming your way in March. Um, this is a replica. 
you know, but it does have the American flag on the sleeve, USA across the front. I figured this jersey would be really cool to wear, you know, during the summer months and you get to like Memorial Day, you get to the 4th of July, you know, and into the fall 9-11 or whatever. I don't know what my plan is just yet for the Phillies. They haven't sent me the tickets just yet through the app, but um, hopefully I have the game or so around that time. I'll wear this at the ballpark. And obviously for the World Baseball Classic too, so it's a uh, JT Ramuto. Of course, the Phillies catcher. That's his World Baseball Classic home jersey right there. Uh, so the Phillies have a few players going to be playing, uh, at least for Team USA. So you got Ramuto. You got Trey Turner, you got uh, Kyle Schwarber. Harper would have if he wasn't, you know, rehabbing the shoulder until the All-Star break or so. But JT was one of the players. I figured I'd get a JT, you know, in the World Baseball Classic, the 2023 20, uh, World Baseball Classic. Never had a World Baseball Classic jersey. I did not get any from the years prior. I don't know why. It just kind of never happened, so... I had an opportunity to grab a custom version, and I went for it, you know. Paying for always helps, but, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm going to move over to the other area, as I usually do. All right, I got one hat to share, and then I'm going to, I'm not going to do a big talk, you know, because uh, I figure maybe we'll do, you know, more when I'm not showing stuff. So those were the jerseys. Those were the jerseys of recent time. Yeah, maybe it's time to get a new tripod. I, I, I say that like every time, right? Maybe, maybe I should get a new tripod. And I, I have it. <laughs> it's pickup money. Um, over here. Sorry about that. You know, I always have to get myself ready. Right? All right, don't move. Don't move. Don't. You, you know you want to. Okay. Here we are. So let's show the hat real quick. Brand new, you know, Flex Fit. Powder blue Phillies. Gotta love it. You know, big burgundy fat P on the front. Nice hat right there with the Phillies on the back. Gray under. Black gut. Nice hat. Didn't even put it on right. See what happens when you do things quick? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that was the latest and greatest Phillies, or hat pickup, I should say. Look at that. Only one hat. <laughs> I, ha I haven't been getting a lot of hats lately. I, you know, obviously, there's, they're always out there. there there's a few uh, that I have interest in from the new, I guess they're like this one, from the... You know, your, your like, um, you know, clubhouse collection, whatever they call them, right? The batting practice, whatever. There's some of them that are really hitting. You know, the, the Reds is one. The Tiger, the Walking Tiger. Mm. <laughs> the navy blue and the gray uh, will probably be coming my way as long as they're still available. And there's some others. I, th I think they did some really nice ones this year. Um, you know, this year I think, and, 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 and the cool thing is like that one is just simple. I mean, last year I know they did like the, the diamond, you know, logo, which I really like. I have quite a few of those. I really, you know, that, 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 that really, um, that hit with me. I like that, that logo from last year's, uh, clubhouse collection, but this year it's just simple. You know, you just have the big bold logo in the front. Some teams went like, like an older logo, you know, some teams went with more of their current stuff. The Phillies did a uh, this one, and they also did the, you know, the Bell, the, the whole Phillies logo. Um, so I might get a gray one in that sometime because I have a ton of red Phillies hats. So, you know, it's nice to mix up the colors every now and then. Um, but there's some good ones. There's some good ones in that set, and I definitely have my eyes on a few. Just, you know, we'll see when, 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 they, when they're picked up. Um other than that, um, you know, um, always got my eyes open. I mean, there's always stuff. I saw a jersey the other day that, yeah, yeah, that that, that that's probably going to happen. <laughs> um, but I would like to talk just a little bit, just a little bit about the uh, the Blue Line collection by Mitchell Ness, the new hockey, you know, jersey collection. And I understand they're like Swingman, you know, your Fanatics branded type, you know, hockey jerseys. 
Um, you know, and I own a few of those Fanatic branded jerseys, and I know what they are, and I know the quality. You know, obviously, it's not there the way they would be the, the authentic Adidas, right? Like I showed that Sebastian Ajo. You're not getting quality, you know, like that with a Fanatics branded jersey, but it's a nice alternative. And in some cases, you can find uh, certain jerseys in a Fanatics branded than you can the Adidas, uh, regular Adidas um, collection, because a lot of the white jerseys, like your your road jerseys, the Fanatics branded, they make them for just about every team, where Adidas you might have here and there. You know, you don't have as big a selection to choose from, you know, if you want that white, you know, row jersey. Um, and then some places you can find some. I know Cool Hockey's an option, but they don't even have all the white jerseys available. They do for certain teams. They don't for others. It's really a hit or miss, whereas Fanatics, you know, you can get them. You can get the Fanatic branded white hockey jerseys more regularly, I should say, than you can with Adidas. And I would imagine it would be the way it is next season. Now, I don't know who's going to take over hockey. This is the last year Adidas has the contract, and we're all trying to figure who's going to take it next season. I feel it's going to be Nike because Nike owns everything else. So why wouldn't they own hockey too? Why wouldn't they, you know, get hockey? They they had hockey many years ago for certain teams. So it's not like they've never made them before. And since they have, like I said, everything else, they'll probably get hockey too. Um, so it is what it is, but you know, <laughs> Mitchell and Ness is a very big hot button, um, you know, particularly in the retail industry. And we know this, you know, we're all fans, we're all collectors. We all want the best, right? And we, you know, as collectors, we would like to see more variety. You know, we would like to see more variety for authentics. And obviously there's been more variety for the swingman jerseys, for the legacy line jerseys. Um, you know, and now you got them dipping their toes back in hockey and the first, you know, selection they put out are basically replica, basically swingman, you know, style hockey jerseys. Again, I haven't seen them in store. No one has, you know, this is all first blush. And so I'm imagining that the quality is going to be because Mitchell and Ness is owned by Fanatics. I would imagine the quality of those jerseys is going to be like the Fanatics breakaway jerseys, which is the replica swingman, basically, hockey jerseys. The detail, not quite there, you know, not, a lot isn't going to be stitched, it's going to be pressed on, you know, a lot of it's going to be pressed on and what have you. Now, the price point for those jerseys at retail is for $175. If you get a custom option, if they don't have a player you want or you want your own name, there's an, uh, an ability for that, and that's about another, you know, that, that costs you about $204, $205, and then there's tax, there's shipping, you know, all that extra stuff, unless you catch a deal with free shipping, uh, handling, you know, whatever. These little dollar things that they put in for stuff, right? Um so that is your basic price point for those jerseys. So Mitchell and Ness put out their line, and they're setting the price at two hundred, and that has bothered a lot of people. A lot of people see that two hundred dollar price tag, and it immediately turns them off. And I get that. Listen, I, I even told I know shout out to Rez. He did his just about weekly, you know, vid on YouTube uh, earlier in the week, and we, you know, a bunch of us hopped on. I was on there. You know, Throwback King and, and um, um, Adam and Bay Area, right? And Mac was on there for a bit. And then uh, even Pistol joined on at the very end there. So uh, lots of opinion, you know, and, and, and opinion is a good thing. You know, when, when people are all giving their opinion on stuff, there's nothing wrong. Everyone's entitled to how they feel. Um, but basic opinion for what was in the group and also the opinion of, I mean, we're, we're talking to hardcore hockey collectors, and I've subscribed to a few of them here on YouTube, and a couple uh, more, just about all of them did a review for the Blue Line collection. And again, no one has these things in hand, you know. So we're all kind of op making opinions without actually holding any of these jerseys in our hand, right? That could be a dangerous thing. That could be a good or bad thing, right? And I'm not saying there's any right or wrong way here, but the basic bottom line opinion by the collectors by the people in the in the ch in, in the comments and basically by you know the, the live that we did with Rez uh, last week was the pri price points wrong it shouldn't be that high 
Why are they charging $200 for jerseys that are basically swingman jerseys? It doesn't make any sense. You know, who's going to buy it? You know, we're, you know, it should be this, it should be that. Now, listen, if I ran things, I think those jerseys should be about 150 because they're hockey jerseys, they're long sleeve, there's more material. You know, there's more involved in the hockey jersey than there is in most of the other jerseys that are made. Uh, the $200 price point, I look at it, I think it's a bit high. My thing, though, is I don't really look at it as much because I know there's sales. I know there's other ways to get them. Uh, right now, the, the only um, place that you can find them, that I'm that I, unless it, they've just hit Fanatics today or something, and I just haven't seen it, is Mitchell and Ness's, you know site, um, the website. And anything that's a new release on their website tends to be a new release for quite a while. I don't know why. That website still needs an overhaul, and it's well overdue for an overhaul. Um, so the jerseys, those jerseys are probably going to be 200 for a while. Now, that being said, they're because Fanatics owns Mitchell and Ness, and Mitchell and Ness stuff shows up on Fanatics, it's only a matter of time before those jerseys hit Fanatics. And Fanatics, when they have a sale, now sometimes they exclude stuff, but you can get the stuff on sale. And let's face it, Fanatics has a sale every week. <laughs> you know, they always do 25%, 25 and more. You know, they're always doing something. They do free shipping a lot, but they always do something. So if you just wait a week or so, you could probably grab the Blue Line collection at like 25% off. Now, again, if you want to pay, you pay. If you like the jersey, you're going to pay for the jersey, you know. Um... Me, I'm someone that does like to get the deal. The fact now that we have the paying for option, it helps. It's not getting a deal, but it kind of feels like you are because the payments spread out through four different payments, basically over a two month span, if you do it right. Um, so the the price that isn't going to bother me as much because I know I can get them on sale eventually, whether it's on a place like Fanatics, even Mitchell and Ness down the road, the store, you know, they have enough sales, right? Um, other places, maybe eventually people start putting them up on eBay at whatever prices they're putting them up. I mean, you can always find a sale. You can always find a deal. You just got to be patient. You just got to wait. Because it's a Mitchell and Ness product, more than likely they're going to be on all these different sites. And even if they aren't on sale at Mitchell and Ness's site for a bit, eventually they will go on sale um, on, on, on other sites. And, you know, you, you can always grab one. You know, you can always catch a sale. You just have to keep your eyes open and, 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 and just be patient. You know, so the $200 price tag, I get it. Uh, it's not what I would have charged for them, but I don't, I don't work for Mitchell and Ness. You know, I have nothing to do with them. I buy their product a lot, but I don't have anything to do with why the price range is the price range. And I know at times it seems like I defend them a lot and, and, and it's really not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to look at it on both sides of the spectrum. I'm looking at it as a collector, but I'm also looking at it as a business end. You know, you're not going to just give stuff away. You know, there's going to be a price and we live in an era, unfortunately, where the prices are inflated for a lot of things. Um, if you look at the, um, I, I've used this reference quite a while, Nike's authentic baseball prices, $450 and up for jerseys is ridiculous. That should not happen. But they do. They have these jerseys and people buy them because the jerseys aren't in stock. So obviously people are buying them. Am I going to go on to, you know, Nike or Fanatics or all these, and, and, and just keep buying, you know, authentic baseball jerseys by Nike? No, because the price range is just, even with the paying for, it's, <laughs> I always use that as a caveat, right? Even with the paying for, it's tough. It's 450 bucks for one jersey. You know, it's tough. Now, will it we'll come today that I, I'll get one here and there? I might, because I still like the jersey. Now, you can find them. If you look on eBay, you can find them. You know, people say, oh, if you just get, you know, you just wait. You, you get these, you know, uh, team issue. You just get some scrub player. And then you send it off and get it customized. Yeah, I mean, you could do that. I mean, yeah, there, there's money involved in that too, right? Because you got to get the jersey. Then you got to send it off. Sometimes the customization isn't as cheap as people think, but it's it's an option. I've gotten plenty of jerseys 
from the uh, the authentic stand at the ballpark, and you can get team issue or game worn jerseys of different players. And the prices it, it just varies, but it's not. I'm not paying 450 bucks. You know, I might pay 200. You know, maybe less than 200, maybe a little over 200, maybe even close to 300. Just depends on the player. It depends on what it is. But I can get those authentic Nike jerseys with a certain patch that I want on it or whatever, what have you for cheaper than a retail authentic. It's a little crazy to think about when you when you think, okay, this is a team issue that you got from the ballpark that's cheaper than something Fanatics is selling. At, you know, but that's the Nike pricing. I mean, that's what it is. And unfortunately, they're pro I'm just guessing they're going to have hockey next year. And, and listen, I mean, we're in a good spot right now with hockey. Retail authentics, Adidas, are about 270 I mean, you're getting authentic hockey jerseys. And, and, and you know, people can you know, whatever about the quality, but you're getting authentic jerseys for under $300. Okay, you can't say that with the NFL, right? For the most part. Uh, NBA, you can. And I think the price point is really good for the NBA, for Nike. And then the hockey for Adidas is about 270 retail. Now, with Nike takes over, the, yeah, those prices are going to go up next season. <laughs> They're an authentic. Probably going to be over 300 I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. Um, it's so weird, too, because the price point for basketball is so perfect, seemingly. And Nike, owns, and then for baseball, they're just, it's like, here's the here's the price point for the NBA, and here's the price point for baseball. It's like, what are we doing, guys? Why? Why? <laughs> but people buy them, right? Hey, I would be lying if I would say I'll never buy one. I probably will. Because, like I said, there's enough ones out there that always catch my eye. And there's still some players out there. I want to get their jersey, right? Um, and, and an authentic version of it, right? I mean, I'm not going to get them all the time. If I get one or two a year, that might be it. But, I mean, I, yeah, you know, I, I would be lying if I say I'll never get one, right? So that's why I never say that. Because <laughs> I, I know me. <laughs> but I'm not going to get them all the time. You know, I mean, there's more there. Honestly, there would be more chance of me getting the blue line collection jerseys for Mitchell and Ness than there would be an authentic baseball jersey for Nike just because of the price point is so ridiculous for Nike for authentic baseball. So I understand why people complain about the price point for those jerseys. I think for the most part the the, the die hard, you know, big time hockey collectors. I mean, let's face it, a lot of them aren't even going after the breakaway jerseys for Fanatics. So, I don't want to sound a certain way, but they're kind of going kind of crazy about a jersey they're probably never going to buy anyhow, you know? Um, it's not a vintage jersey. It's not an authentic jersey. And a lot of the hockey, the, the, the hardcore hockey heads, that's what they're looking for. And I don't blame them. I mean, those authentics, the, the vintage stuff, the coho, the old Nike, the... The starter, the the pro player, I mean, all those, the CCM, all those are beautiful. You know, and I have a, a, a decent amount, so I know what the quality is for those. And I understand why there are people that that's just all they go after, right? So I get it. Um, but, again, without actually having any in hand, seeing them in a store, I mean, to kind of go that crazy about it, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it's exactly warranted, but then again, this is their this is their passion, right? They're as passionate about hockey jerseys as I am about ball jerseys, right? Different sports, different, you know, basketball, football, baseball, hockey. Yeah, so I get it. When you're passionate about something, you're gonna have your opinion. You're gonna put it out there on a on a on a outlet like a YouTube or an Instagram or what have you, right? So I get it. And I, like I said, I do understand why people don't like the $200 price tag. It is high. Um, I don't know how they come up with how they set the prices for things. None of us have inside information on that. Um, so I get that, you know, and, and I understand why there would be like backlash over that. And I think part of it also is because they're saying, well, if this is what they're charging for basically your swingman hockey jerseys, what are they going to be charging for authentics? I just hope that they don't use the Nike uh, <laughs> authentic baseball, um, <coughs> excuse me, authentic baseball guide to where we want to charge for jerseys. And it does scare me 
those prices for the authentic Nike baseball, that scares me. I, it, that's like, boy, if this is a glimpse at what things are going to be, oh, right? I mean, we see prices go up all the time for stuff. Every year, the price goes up for jerseys. It might go up by $10, $20 or more. Every year, you're seeing an increase, right, for basketball, for football, for baseball, for hockey, every year. And it's a scary thing, you know, because some, in, in, in some ways, some of these jerseys are a little priced out. Boy, it keeps going. Even with the paying for it, it's going to get tough. But that, again, that's why you wait for the sales and the deals. And I know it's hard to do that because you see stuff you want it right away, right? It's hard to wait, but there's so many of them anymore, you know? Even with Mitchell and Ness, they, they just have sales to have sales. They never used to do that. You know, when I first started collecting, Mitchell and Ness had, at least I'm talking about the store, I want to say they had three guaranteed sales a year. The Super Bowl sale, the week of the Super Bowl, the Father's Day sale, and the Black Friday sale. That was it. Now, maybe they would do a, like a baseball sale here and there, something. But for the most part, you were, you were guaranteed three sales a year. That was it. That was it. Now, <laughs> particularly under the Fanatics umbrella, they're doing sales just to do a sale. Oh, it's a weekend. All right, come on into the flagship. We're doing 25%. <laughs> Just come on in, right? Now, I'm not against that. I, I'm happy for that. Yeah, I mean, you can go in there into the store. You can go online. They, they just, and there's like ending a sale today for like swingman shorts or something, right? There's always something, you know, they're, they're always throwing you this or that, you know? Now, obviously on, on the site, it's a little different because, if it's still a new release, or obviously you have exclusions for certain players, but the new release stuff is excluded. And that stuff, again, stays in the new release section for a while. A while. So, <laughs> it might be until the summertime until you can actually catch a deal on the uh, the Blue Line jerseys on Mitchell and Ness's site. But it is what it is. Um, so, anyhow, I know I've kind of been all over the place, but that's my take. The $200 price tag, I'm not a big fan of it, but gauging it off of the breakaway collection from Fanatics, that's kind of, you know, where where those jerseys are, you know, so it is what it is. And like I said, you just wait for the deals, um, and you can you can grab them. Once they hit Fanatics, there's going to be deals. You're gonna you're not paying $200, believe me. You're not paying $200 for them. Um, but if you wanted to, there's a 4 and 4 option on PayPal. They should just call it the Mighty Fan option at this point. <laughs> as many times as I use it. That's a, they should have, like, my smiling picture next to, oh, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Paying for, it's the Mighty Fan way. <laughs> Anyhow, that is my take. That is my video for today. My dad's been trying to call me. I guess I should call him back. So I'm going to go for now. But what do you always got to do? Leave those likes. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit the bell icon so you get notified to all future content from yours truly. And you all take care out there. I hope everything's going well for everyone. Listen, I know we have these fun, you know, discussions on stuff. You know, when Mitchell Ness drops some new stuff. And it gets spirited because we have passion. And that's what it is. And whether you're big time, you know, in, in the groups like, Kings of Throwbacks or Jerseys, Kicks and Lids or what have you on Facebook or whether you're the hardcore, you know, just big time hockey collectors, right, that we have here on on on, on YouTube. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. That's exactly, that's what a, a platform like this is. It gives us the ability to do that. And I respect every opinion, whether you're a guy on, on the groups or whether you're a big time hockey head. I mean, listen, your opinion matters and, and you know, I have my opinion on things, and I kind of, you know, may, maybe I'm just too used to the sale. So I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, it's this price, but most, most of the time I'm not going to pay it. So, okay. But, again, I get it. I get it. It's it, You want to pay for better quality, and, and, and I completely understand that. And, you know, but we'll see. I am happy, though, that they have their their, their foot back into the hockey waters. I, 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 I really am. It's something that has been missing from them for a while. I remember when they were had the licensing years ago and they were pumping out so many great things. Well, they still haven't made certain teams. They might want to get on that. There's some really nice ones out there. <laughs>
I better call my dad back. I will see you all in the next one. You all take care.